A for a pasta. So several months ago, I made a video um, called, um, I think it was titled Apostates Are Us, right? Yeah, Apostates Are Us. That was the, the title of the video several months ago. And it's funny how the last few weeks, the governing body leaders, um, <clears throat> they have um, made a public declaration. They made videos, they made talks about the apostates, right? And I find it quite comical because I say to myself, any Jehovah's Witness with common sense, right? Any Jehovah's Witness with common sense. If they hear a talk about apostates, and they're not even thinking about apostates, right? Most Jehovah's Witnesses, they're not thinking about apostates. We are not on their minds, right? But if the governing body leaders, if the rank and file JWs are not thinking about apostates, but their leaders are giving talks about apostates, what is that going to do for the the rank and foul? What is that going to do for the average Jehovah's Witness if they keep hearing talks about apostates? And mind you, they're not even, a lot of them, they're not even thinking about us. They're not even thinking about apostates, right? But their leaders are talking about us. So this, this is how I picture it, right? This is how I personally picture it. Let's say you're in a relationship with somebody, right? You either dating somebody or you're married to somebody, and right away they come to you and they say, "Oh, honey, I'm not cheating on you. You don't have to look through my phone. I'm not cheating on you. I'm not a cheater. I, I, you don't. You don't have to look at my phone at all." If that person comes to you and they say it off the back, and you wasn't even thinking about them cheating on you, right? That person just comes to you and say, "Oh, honey, I'm not cheating on you. You don't have to look at my phone." And they're, they're so defensive, they're so protective. Oh, this is my phone. You don't have to just trust me. I'm not cheating on you. Just take my word for it. Right off the back, if someone gets that defensive, when when you get, when you be a bit um, reluctant, reluctant to trust them. And mind you, you're not the one approaching them saying, hey, give me your phone. I don't trust you. If they went off the on their own initiative and they said, oh, oh, I, I, I'm not cheating on you. I, I, I love you. Trust me. Just take my word for it. Just take my word for it. And trust me, don't look through my phone. I'm not cheating on you. If someone said that to you, wouldn't you off the bat think that something is up? Right. So now I'm saying to myself, all these JW, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're not even thinking about apostates. But the leaders are giving talks about apostates and saying, hey, the, the, leader, the leaders are saying, hey, don't listen to apostates. They're evil. They're from the Satan, the devil. Don't listen to them at all. Just don't, don't even hear them out. Don't watch their face, their, their YouTube videos. Don't, don't watch them on Facebook. Don't hear them at all. If a rank and foul Jehovah's Witness were to hear that, right, someone with common sense, they would be like, oh, wait, hold up. Why are... The governing body leader is getting so defensive. I might even think about the apostates, but they're giving talks about apostates. I thought apostates didn't matter. I thought apostates were from Satan the devil. So why are there talks about them? We shouldn't even be talking about them. But now they're bringing light. They're bringing attention to the apostates, which is good, which is good. Because like I said, the critical thinking Jehovah's Witnesses the Jehovah's Witnesses that are bound to wake up, they're going to hear these talks and be like, hold on. Why are they talking about apostates? What does the organization have to hide? What is the organization hiding from the leaders? Sorry, sorry. What is the organization hiding from their members? What are they hiding from, the, from their members? If they're constantly giving talks about apostates and not listening to apostates, what don't they want us to hear from the apostates. Hmm. See, now now people are going to start to question things. So I love it. I love it when the governing body leaders, when they give attention to the apostates. Because little do they know, they are planting seeds. This is the irony. The governing body leaders, they are trying to shield witnesses from, from apostates, right? They're trying to shield witnesses from any apostate news, any apostate videos, any apostate literature, literature right? But little do they know that just by mentioning apostates, 
they are becoming defensive. And the critical thinking Jehovah's Witnesses, right? The critical thinking Jehovah's Witnesses with common sense, they're going to say to themselves, hold on, if this is the truth, aren't we supposed to listen to the apostates? Aren't we supposed to listen, aren't we supposed to, listen to anyone and everyone that is criticizing us? Aren't we supposed to listen to what the government, uh, I forgot the governing body leader, but he mentioned, he said, uh, Check the facts. One governing body leader said, check the facts before you listen to apostates. So I encourage any Jehovah's Witness that's watching this video, anyone that's having doubts, that's having questions, to check the facts. And you can only do that by listening to, listen to both JW.org and also XJW material as well. You have to listen. You, you literally have to listen to everything, not just from one source. You can listen to the apostates and you can listen to JW.org. And guess what? You can come to your own conclusion. And I promise you, once you listen to both sides of the stories, once you do your research on Reddit, on YouTube, on Google, once you listen to all the XJW material, I promise you, you will see things from a different perspective. But you have to say to yourself, why are the governing body leaders talking about apostates? Why are they publicizing apostates now? I thought apostates were from the devil. If they're from the devil, they shouldn't even be talking about them. But they are now giving light, light to the apostates. And like I said, the witnesses, the Jehovah's Witnesses with critical thinking skills, now, they are, now they're going to start to have doubts. Now they're going to start to have questions. Because you're bringing light to the apostates. And technically, we should mean nothing to the organization. So if we mean nothing, why are there constant talks month after month about apostates? This is supposed to be the truth, right? This is, this is supposed to be God's one and true channel on earth. One and true organization on earth. So, who care? Who cares about the apostates? Why give talks about the, Why give talks about us apostates if we represent Satan, the devil? If we're telling so-called lies, why care about what we have to say? Why make talks about us? So I love it. I love it. I love it when the, when the governing body leaders talk about apostates because little do they know that they are planting seeds they are planting seeds in the Jehovah's Witnesses brains because people are going to start to have questions they're going to start to have doubts Jehovah's Witnesses they're going to start to ask themselves hold on if this is the truth why can't we listen to, why can why can't we listen to XJW material because technically, technically, Jehovah's Witnesses, they should be able to listen to any and everything, any and everything, right? And they should come to the conclusion that this is God's true organization on earth. But the fact that they can't do that, the fact that they can't be open-minded, they have to be pretty much indoctrinated, right? They, they pretty much have to be fully indoctrinated and listen to only the governing body leaders. The fact that they can only be so close-minded, that should speak volumes in itself. Because this is supposed to be the truth, right? This is the truth. According to, your, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses, this is the truth. So, if this is the truth, then guess what? I should be able to ask you questions. I should be able to have doubts. I should be able to look at anything and everything online and I should come back to the, to the conclusion that this is the truth. But Jehovah's Witnesses, they can't do that. But instead, they have to listen to these talks about their leaders tell, telling them, hey, don't listen to XJWs. Don't listen to, X, don't, don't listen to the apostates. Don't listen to them. Why? You have the truth, right? If you have the truth, you should hear what I have to say. And at the end of the day, you should say, you know what? Oh, that apostate, he's lying. He don't know what he's talking about. I have the truth. 
But you can't do that, can you? So the fact that you can't do that tells me that you can't have the truth. It tells me that you don't have the truth. You don't have the truth. Now, going back to the beginning of this video, I brought up the scenario where uh, you're, in a, you're in a relationship, right? Either you're married, you're dating somebody, and off the back, your partner tells you, oh, I'm not cheating on you. I am not cheating on you. I am loyal to you. You don't don't look at my phone. Don't look at my text messages. Don't don't even look at it. Just take my word. Just take my word that I'm loyal to you. Don't do not look at my phone at all. If someone were to say that to you, would you assume that they are lying to you? Or would you trust them 100 percent If they came off the back and said, oh, oh, they got all defensive, right? They got all defensive out of nowhere saying, oh, don't look at my phone. Just just take my word. Trust me. If someone said that to you, would you believe that they actually are being faithful and loyal to you? What What are they hiding from you? If you can't look at their phone and they say, hey, just take my word. Likewise. It is the same with the Jehovah's Witness organization. If someone tells you, oh, oh, don't look at, don't, do not look at outside material. Just trust us. Trust us that we know what we are talking about. We are God's channel and that the apostates are all lies. Oh, the apostates are lying to you, huh? If they're lying to you, then guess what? Let the Jehovah's Witnesses decide for themselves. How about that? How about that? The the Jehovah's Witness leaders should tell their members, you know what? We know we have the truth. So we encourage you guys to look at our material on JW.org and look at the apostate materials on YouTube, Reddit, Google, etc. Right? They, the, the governing body leaders would tell them their members, look at all the material, our material and the apostate material. And we know we have the truth. We know that you guys are the, you guys going to come back running to us because we are the true organization. The governing body leaders, they can never, ever say that. They can never say that because they know, they know for a fact that they are con artists. They know this. Either they are con artists or they are delusional and they really believe that they are God's channel, right? But anywho... They're con artists. I'm telling you guys that for a fact. They are con artists. And for someone to tell you, and I, I'm telling you, Jehovah's Witnesses, if you're watching this, if you're having doubts, if you're questionable, if you don't know, if, if you're speculating, if you should, if you should stay in the organization or not, I'm I'm telling you guys, look at JW.org, look at your material, and guess what? Look at JW.facts, look at XJW material on YouTube. Look at all the CSA cases online where elders have abused children. Look at all this material online on Reddit, on Google. Do your own research outside of JW.org. And then you guys will come to your own conclusion as to whether if this is the truth or not. But for some, for, but for your leaders... But for the Jehovah's Witness leaders to tell you guys, oh, don't even look at their material. Don't watch their videos. That should raise some red flags. That should raise some serious red flags because they are telling you to be closed minded. And mind you, Jehovah's Witnesses, they have no solid proof that this is the true religion, that this is the truth. They have no solid proof. It's all based on emotion. If you was if you was to stop and approach a Jehovah's Witness in, in the streets, right? If you saw a Jehovah's Witnesses, a Jehovah's Witness dead in the eyes, and you said to them, "Hey, listen, don't give me any emotional reason. Give me a logical, rational reason how this is the truth. Tell me why you why do you believe in this organization? And don't give me any emotional re- reason, right? Give me a logical." Explanation, explanation as to how this is the truth. A Jehovah's Witness would not know how to answer that question because all the answers would be emotional. It's based on emotion. Because at the end of the day, they don't want to die. At the end of the day, 
It is easier for them to believe in a paradise earth. It is easier for them to believe in a man-made make-believe pipe dream paradise earth. That's easier for them than for them to believe that one day they're going to die. Because at the end of the day, nobody wants to die. People want to live. So people try to prolong, prolong the life no, no matter what. Even if it's make-believe, right? And like I always say, I always I said this in a few of my videos. The Jehovah's Witness organization is a drug. It's a drug. When people take drugs, right? Nine times out of ten, when people take drugs, they are dealing with some type of emotional or mental um, uh, pain, right? They're going, they're in pain emotionally or mentally. So they take alcohol or they take drugs to suppress the emotions, to escape from that state of mind. It's the same with the organization. A lot of Jehovah's, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're struggling, right? Either financially, emotionally, physically, they're struggling in one way or another. So it's easier for them to tell themselves, hey, listen, I have a paradise earth. I have, I have another world in store. There's another world ahead of me. This world is shit. This world means nothing. There is another world approaching. So it's easier for Jehovah's Witnesses to indulge in this oh, paradise is around the corner drug. That's easier for them to take in than for them to take in that there's nothing else after this life. And it's sad. It's sad what this organization does to its members. And it's sad that millions of people are about to die believing in this man-made organization and thousands upon thousands have already died. How many people do we know that were born JWs and then died in their 60s, 70s, 80s believing in this man-made bullshit? How many people do we how many people do we know? <clears throat> See, when you get up when you get a hold of somebody's mind, you control their entire life. That is why it is easy for these people to believe these pipe dreams. That is why it's easy for these Jehovah's Witnesses to believe in these pipe dreams, right? That paradise is right around the corner. And they will tell them, they will lie to them themselves. They will convince themselves for the rest of their lives till they die that paradise is right around the corner. Because it is way, way easier to believe in that than to believe that humans only live for a short term and then they die. No one wants to believe that, oh, we, we live and die. You know, you know how many witnesses I talk, spoke to? And I was, trying to, I was trying to talk to them and try to help them say, that, hey, listen, there is no paradise earth coming. And they were like, what? what? So we just live and die? That's it? No, there has to be a paradise. Because they couldn't comprehend that they, Jehovah's Witnesses couldn't comprehend that there is a possibility. I'm not saying I have, I'm not saying I have the facts, but but there is a possibility that there is no life after this earth. There's a possibility. Now I could be wrong. There could be a heaven. There could be a hell. There could be another life. Who knows? I don't, who knows? I'm just speculating, right? We all, everyone is speculating, but no one has the facts. No one has 100% proof. But but it is way easier to, to convince yourself that, hey, listen, I am struggling now because there is a better life after this than for someone to, than for someone to say, oh, there's nothing after this life and we're struggling now. So we just got to roll with the, you know, roll with the dice. We just got to struggle and just die. People don't want to believe that. That's why there's all these different religions. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, um... All these religions out here that, that believe in the afterlife, right? It is easier for them to believe in something in something else. It's easier for them to believe in the next life than than to than for them to just believe that this is it. People don't want to believe in that. But 
No one should have to waste their entire life believing in a man-made organization. No one. And that is why I make these videos because I know it is completely uncomfortable for a lot of people. Because uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't want to believe in death. That's why they are. That, that is why Jehovah's Witnesses are in this religion because they believe they're going to live forever. And my, my my thing is this: Why would you lie to yourself? Why would you rather lie to yourself and and convince yourself that? Oh, paradise is right around the corner when you could simply do your research right here and right now and you can wake the fuck up. You can wake up. You don't have to be in this organization. You can, you can literally wake up. Anyone can wake up with the, with the technology that we have. We have so many websites online that can help Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses to realize that, hey, you are not in the truth. You are not in the truth. And... You know how they always talk about apostates, right? Apostates, they tell lies. Apostates are deceiving people. Don't listen to them. Don't talk to them. I want to I wanna end the video on this note. <laughs> so, I recently read a, um, a story. Sorry, it's not a story. But I recently read something online where an elder in the UK... He murdered a, a sister. He murdered his fellow sister, right? Not not his his fleshly sister, but he, he he murdered a spiritual sister, right? So an elder murdered a spiritual sister. I'm not sure if they're in the same congregation or not, right? But he murdered his spiritual sister, and he was an elder in the UK. This happened recently, right? I, I think in the last few months it happened recently. But anywho, I said to myself. Wow, an elder murdering somebody. And he killed her with a, helm, a hammer, right? He pretty much bashed her brains out from the, from, the, you know, from the story. But I said to myself, this elder was a murderer. He and... Uh, let's say he was on a, ju a judicial committee. Let's say this elder, a few weeks ago or a few months prior, his, prior him murdering somebody, right? Let's say he was on a judicial committee and he got somebody to fellowship for sexual immorality. But yet he goes and murders somebody several weeks or several months later. Was Jehovah's Holy Spirit with him then? Because the elders will lie and say, oh, when we do fellowship people, we have God's Holy Spirit. We have God's backing. But my question to the people to the Jehovah's Witnesses that say that, oh, oh, uh, apostates, they all tell lies. They just spread lies. Apostates spread lies. Oh, really? Here is a rational, logical question for any Jehovah's Witness out there. That elder who was supposedly appointed by God, because they say that elders are appointed by God, right? So the elder that was appointed by God, and he happened to bash somebody brains out. Did he have God's Holy Spirit guiding him then? Did he have God's Holy Spirit guiding him when he was in judicial committees? The fellowship of people, reproving people, shunning people? Was this elder appointed by God's Holy Spirit when he had the power to shun, to shun people from their families? But yet, he can go and murder somebody, right? Didn't Doesn't God read hearts? Didn't God read, read, read this God's heart and, and uh, know that this, this man, this elder, was going to kill somebody? That he had a treacherous heart? But yet, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, they give all their faith and trust in these men, these elders. And this is a perfect, it's a sad example. It's sad. But it's a perfect example as to how imperfect these elders are. Because all these Jehovah's Witnesses around the world are instructed to get their 100% faith and trust in these elders. And look at this. This elder here in the UK, he ended up killing somebody. He ended up killing somebody. So I said to myself, imagine just a few weeks prior or a few months prior him killing his sister. And he's at a judicial committee. 
about to the thoughts about it because they watch porn or because they fornicate it. <clears throat> and here he is over here a few months later, a few weeks later, killing somebody. Where was God's Holy Spirit then? How did this brother get appointed in the first place if he was going to be a murderous prick? These are the questions Jehovah's Witnesses need to ask themselves. But yet, they are too busy listening to eight, nine men in upstate New York. Eight, nine men that they would never ever meet. Eight, nine men that are dictating their entire fucking life. So, are these apostate lies? Is this an apostate lie? I'm telling you that an elder, an elder in the UK, he murdered somebody. He's supposed to be showered by God's Holy Spirit. He's supposed to have God's Holy Spirit. He murdered somebody with a hammer. And these same elders, these same men are shunning you from your family, telling you we have God's Holy Spirit. But yeah, they end up to be, these elders end up to be murderers, rapists, pedophiles. They end up destroying families. And yet all these Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, they put all their faith and trust in these men. And that is why this video is titled, A for Apostate. I am proud to be an apostate. You know why? Because I, I am exposed in this organization for what it is. This is not a lie. Any Jehovah's Witness can look on Google, they can look on YouTube, they can turn on their TV and see, hey, who? A Jehovah's Witness elder in the UK, he murdered a sister. Is that an apostate lie? Is that an apostate lie? If it's on the news, if he actually did it, he's going to jail. Is that a lie? It is time. We are now in the year 2024. It is time for Jehovah's Witnesses. It's time for Jehovah's Witnesses to use their critical thinking skills. It's time to, for them to use their brains. Apostates are not liars. We are simply exposing this organization for what it is. And we are telling the people the truth about the truth. Do your research. Look at jwfacts.com. Look at the YouTube videos. See why XJWs have left the organization. Because when you think about it, if paradise was a real thing, it would have been here by now. Joe, Jehovah's Witnesses, they can lie to themselves all they want. Oh, Jehovah's, he's allowing more people to come to the organization. You can say that too. You could keep talking that tune for the rest of your life to the day you die. But at the end of the day, Jehovah's Witnesses know that paradise would have been here by now. I encourage everyone to do the research. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video. Take care.